So, Hannah, is Joe Biden about to delete our TikTok account? So, there are a lot of people speculating that the U.S. government might be trying to ban TikTok. And this is actually not a new story. This initially started all the way back in June when the FCC commissioner, who is a Republican, initially came out and he called on Google and Apple to ban TikTok, which the FCC cannot just unilaterally do because they don't have oversight in that way. Um, but he was basically saying that TikTok is stealing the data of U.S. consumers who use it. Um, and this has been backed up. Their parent company, ByteDance, has repeatedly accessed private information on U.S. users, even though the company tried to say that they were not doing that. China has tried to push back and say that, you know, they limit it. There's only certain people within their government that have access. But either way, it's pretty fishy, and there's a lot of people who are becoming concerned that this could be a national security risk. And that's because they think it could be used as a surveillance tool. They also think it could be used as a propaganda tool if there's any kind of escalation in our conflict with China. Um, people have also pointed out that it could be used to stoke discord and dissent among the Western youth, which I think you and I have both witnessed on the app. They certainly promote communism over capitalism. They certainly try to downplay um, the quality of life in Western countries. So all of that I think is fair, but that had kind of dissipated for a little bit until earlier this week when the U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland came out and said that he was going to announce, uh, they said that he was going to announce a ban on TikTok because he kind of teased this press conference and said that he'd give details of a quote, quote, significant national security case. Everybody assumed that that meant TikTok. Ultimately, he came out and clarified that it had nothing to do with TikTok. It had to do with them charging two Chinese nationalists that were trying to obstruct justice in another investigation. But that still led to people kind of speculating online that something could be coming down the road, you had people all over that were saying they were hearing chatter that the US would ban TikTok. And so that's where this kicked off. You and I started talking about it because I think this is interesting. And while I don't think it's imminent at this point, I do. I don't really think it's a conversation that's going away. It seems to be something that's on the table. And it's kind of an interesting overlap because a lot of people are very concerned about China and our conflict with them. There's a lot of people, I think, who are pushing for further conflict with China. Um, and then you also have sort of the general issues with big tech that overlap with this, right? We have both the left and right very concerned with how information is being distributed on social media channels, what information is allowed to be out there, how it can be used to sway political outcomes outcomes. And, you know, we started base politics in large part because we believe in the power of social media to affect change, especially in the political sector, but in many areas of culture as well. And I think that we feel very passionately about going to where the battlefield is and winning in the marketplace of ideas. And we've been able to do that, but we do it while also acknowledging there are hurdles. Um, and I think especially when it comes to TikTok, I've had a lot of people question me about my use of it since it is owned by a communist government. So what are your takes on this? Do you think we should ban TikTok? And if so, why? Yeah, there's a lot of support on the right for banning or heavily restricting TikTok. Remember, Trump actually briefly considered doing it, and then they were trying to make TikTok sell to a U.S. company for portions of it, but it ended up getting unwinded with some assurances they received. Uh, but there's also been all this reporting, and I'm not sure how true it, it honestly is. I can't say I'm an expert in this, but there's been reporting suggesting that TikTok had planned to track the location of specific American individuals of interest to its parent company, which, as you note, is ultimately controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. There's also been reporting that TikTok can access data from other apps and possibly even access your camera or microphone when you're not using the app. All of this is reporting. The company denies a lot of this. I can't really sit here and litigate what's true and what's false, but it's often called Chinese spyware, <laughs> uh, which I think is perhaps hyperbolic, but gets at a real concern. Now, should it be banned though? I, I lean towards no. Um, uh, you know, even for free marketeers, national security can be a viable justification on some trade restrictions, but that seems like a really broad measure. Um, I think people should be made fully aware of all the risks. And the truth that we have to grapple with is that a lot of Americans don't care. A lot of them, if you explain to them exactly how much their privacy is being compromised by using TikTok, will say, okay, and shrug, especially Gen Zers. They really have just very minimal expectations of privacy. And we might not like that, but that should, I think, mostly be their choice. 
Uh, one thing that I would think does make sense would be uh, prohibiting, you know, federal government employees, state government employees, anyone with security clearances from using the app because the uh, it could be used to spy on or obtain information that could be used to blackmail people in our government. Um, I think that would make a lot of sense. I think if companies want to have a policy, like say that you're at a Fortune 500 company and you don't want your executives using TikTok, uh, fine. I don't think we should be stepping in and banning it. Uh, I'm also not sure that we could. Uh, Gen Z happens to be much more tech savvy than Congress <laughs> <laughs> or Joe Biden. And I think that a lot of them would laugh, say, OK, Boomer, and then set their VPN to Mexico and be right back on TikTok. So I think the, the question of a ban, I don't know, maybe they could find a way to do it. But banning entire apps, blocking platforms that tens of millions of young people are now uh, really, it's their top app. They get news. They get it's like it's become the second biggest search engine after Google, I believe. TikTok itself. So I think a ban is not warranted. Probably too heavy handed. But I think there are real concerns. I think they're valid, and and I think there's a, a variety of restrictions and measures we could take to hopefully a, address them. Well, I definitely think you're right that Americans don't care about privacy. Like we saw Edward Snowden sacrifice his life to let them know their own government was fine on them. And people mostly went nah, or thought he was an enemy even, which is still just the most bonkers take I've ever seen in my life. That being said, I, you know, I'm somebody who does care about privacy, but I think oftentimes when we're talking about social media apps, it gets a little bit overblown. Like I don't care if a social media app is listening to things I say as much as I do if the US government is listening to things I say, right? Because mostly what they're using it for is to sell me stuff I want and to make me have a better But what if on that the app. app that's listening is also a government? But I think I just <laughs> fail to see how it really if it's the US government that has the power to put me in jail or take away my liberties, yes. But how does China you know, I think the bigger concern actually from my from my standpoint would be that I do think it is a propaganda tool and they very much do favor in the algorithm schools of thought that are not ours, right? You see a ton of like out and out Marxist content on this app and I think that that can be a very powerful persuasion tool. We have a lot of young people that are on TikTok they're getting their news there, but they're also learning their opinions there. They're seeing the world there. They're hearing about other people's cultural experience. They're like, I don't think it's an accident that when I get on TikTok, oftentimes I'm flooded with people who have left the US and are so much happier, left the US and are thriving, left the US and have much better socialized care in other countries, right? I don't think it's an accident that when I go on there and I'm looking at real estate, I'm presented with the whole anti-landlord, kill your landlord kind of content that you see on there, right? That's, that's intentional. And you and I have both had to overcome some of those algorithm barriers to get the policies that we talk about out there. I don't think it's an accident that when I go on there and talk about the fact that we funded the Wuhan lab and ask questions about COVID that I get censored, right? All of these things are, I think, uh, a problem. But I think to me that says we have to go fight. And I think you're right. If they tried to ban it, not only would people find a way around it, but something else would crop up. And I don't think there's any reason to think that those things like Instagram are necessarily more favorable to our views either. That is just the sort of inertia of where we're at right but now. But they're not as bad on the privacy front, though. Like Instagram they, or YouTube, they're American companies. They're not owned by the Communist they Party. They are just as bad. They sell our data to our government. They're just as bad. I don't like, think they it are. It is the exact same thing. And again, I just don't think that matters as much, right? I like the fact that I am sold things I want to be sold in my ads. I like the fact that when I get on Instagram or TikTok, there's content that I actually want to see. There's there's an extent to where the privacy and the data questions are, you know, about consumers and actually getting you a better product. And I do think that things like the Apple iPhone are doing a lot to let you customize that as well. You can now say when you open an app, if you want it to track you, if you want it to share your data with other apps, you have a little bit more um, power over that. And I think that will only increase as we progress. I do agree that it being a communist owned government behind TikTok does make it different than other social media platforms. But I, I don't think I'm anywhere near worried enough about it to think the US government should be banning it, nor do I think they could. So I think it's kind of a silly conversation. And I think what we should be trying to do is find ways to de-escalate um, our issues with China and not be getting into things like trade wars with them, which I think we're really foolish 
to enter in the first place under Trump. Um, I think there are better ways that we can look to try to spread democracy and and spread our views. But I don't want to see us get into an actual conflict with China. I don't think that anybody should be gunning for that. And unfortunately, I feel like that's where a lot of this kind of backlash on the right comes from, is there, there are people who I think want us to get into eventually an actual conflict with this country. Well, I think we are in a conflict with them, not a war, but like a geopolitical and economic war for top dominance. And I think China's a real aggressor towards us and does a lot of very aggressive and bad stuff towards the U.S. And I, I think, for example, like one real threat from TikTok is the reason that TikTok is a lot more popular than Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts is because it's better. Its algorithm is amazing. It knows so much about you and is so good at customizing your content that it shows you, but that can be weaponized. There's a, a pretty disturbing history of China blackmailing government officials to force them to spy for them. Uh, and so let me give you an example. In a Republican administration, I knew many of uh, such folks in the um, Trump administration, you have somebody working in a national security position who is gay but not out because he comes from a very Christian family. Uh, yet TikTok knows he's gay and knows that for a long time. CCP accesses that information and blackmails him. It says, we'll expose you to your family who said they would disown you uh, unless you leak us these government files. Right? Like, like that kind of thing is not a far-fetched scenario because China has literally done this many times. Uh, and there are ways it could undermine U.S. national security, U.S. trade secrets, lots of things. So I'm sympathetic. But like I said, I think there's lots of things we could do far short of a ban that might actually make a difference on that. Um, yeah, it's a messy issue for me. I, I, But yeah, I don't think that we should or probably are capable of banning it. So I, I agree with you. It is kind of a little bit of a debate over theory, but it's also an interesting because I've become more of a China hawk. You know, I used to believe, I'm certainly not like a full China hawk, but I've definitely become, I used to believe what I still mostly believe, but Milton Friedman and others have famously talked about free trade as a liberalizing force. When goods cross borders, soldiers won't, right? This idea that when we trade with another country, you'll become more interconnected, uh, they will become freer, as they grow richer, they'll become more democratic. You're, you'll be, they'll be less likely to have conflict. Unfortunately, as China has liberalized, uh, as they opened up their markets and got a lot richer, they did. They became more authoritarian, not less. They became more hostile to the U.S. And they're still the exception. It still occurred in the opposite direction in a lot of other places. But it has challenged some of my beliefs. And then. You know, the things they do to our intellectual property, they, I mean, I agree trade war with them is bad, but they've been waging a trade war on us uh, regardless. Now, tariffs and response are still self-defeating, um, but they're like, I, I've just become more concerned about China. I think I, I, I was definitely somebody who three or four years ago really wasn't that phased by it. Now I do think it's a legitimate concern, but not necessarily one that requires banning TikTok. Yeah, I think your points are fair, and I think that we need to be engaging this conversation because so often, you know, one problem with libertarian theory is we're kind of just like hands off. And I think there are enough people who are concerned about China, and I get it. It's a brutal, disgusting, inhumane regime. They literally disappear people. They persecute pastors. Communism is the most deadly ideology of all time. And I think that there we have to think more deeply about solutions. Um, but that being said, you know, when we talk about the trade war, it's like, predominantly what they were doing was underselling U.S. companies. And I do understand some of the issues with that. There's also benefits to that. There's a lot of much cheaper products that we have because of that that have benefited especially poor Americans. And I don't think we want to keep escalating this by continuing to escalate that trade war or by taking motions like banning TikTok. I think, again, we need to find more diplomatic means to move forward. But also the, the reality is that until the people of China rise up and, and fight back against their own government, you're never going to see long-term change. I think that's actually kind of the problem in Russia that we're seeing right now, right? Like you overthrew through the Soviet regime there, but it's still really in power for the most part because the people themselves never rose up and actually fought back and actually fought to liberate their country. And so uh, long term, I don't think U.S. involvement in these conflicts actually is a solution either. But we'll have to move on from that for another time. It's a very interesting discussion. And the good news is, I think that if they were to ban TikTok, 
it is already so dominated the social media platform has already so changed that whole market that every other company is really integrated the same kind of capacities and will only probably continue to i think other things will pop up so either way we will still be using short form video to get our ideas out there and i guess it matters less but i personally like tiktok because my algorithm is lit mm -hmm.